And Lisa Marks is here from Hannibal History Museum, Historic Hannibal Tours. Lisa, good morning. Good morning, Harold. And uh, we got so much going on. It's best to just take a deep breath and just just go. Uh, <laughs> uh, we've talked about this uh, a, a couple of times uh, when you were in, uh, and uh, things continue to go well with the uh, Molly Brown House. Yes, uh, we are just having so much fun up there. Um, we are delighted to say that since we started uh, just around Memorial Day that we've had over 700 people go through the house. Uh, one of the more interesting days was uh, we had a, a school group come from Warrenton, and we had 131 children go through Molly's house in about wow. two hours. Oh, my. So that was quite a day. <laughs> um, we uh, have added to our staff Sam Walker, and she has just been amazing. Uh, many of you probably remember her. She used to work at Bergman's over in Quincy. Well, she's our, the site manager over at the Molly Brown House now, and she's restoring all the gardens and uh, doing landscaping, and it's just beautiful. So uh, if you haven't had a chance to come up and see what we've done at Molly's house so far, you have to come by and take a look. Definitely. So what are the, what are the hours there? We're there 10 to 4 every day through uh, Labor Day, and then we'll probably just do weekends in September and October. All right, so folks need to need to come check that out to to check out the the other famous uh, uh, native uh, Hanna, Hannibalian. That's right. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, so um, some uh, other things going on. Um, once we get into uh, get a little closer to Fourth uh, of July, uh, of course, that's going to be a week, a big weekend all over Hannibal. Yes, and uh, you've got a couple of good things going on. We do. There's a lot going on at the Hannibal History Museum uh, down on Main Street on July third, Thursday night. We're going to be the food vendor for Music Under the Stars. We're serving walk-in tacos, so come on down and listen to good music and uh, and have some tacos with us on Thursday night. And then the next night, Friday, July fourth, uh, the Hannibal History Museum has partnered with the Hannibal Arts Council and we're going to have the first annual Brew Revolution. Uh, it's basically a big beer tasting uh, behind the museum in our parking lot back there. We're going to have barbecue and food. Uh, Golden Eagle is bringing over the beer. And actually, they have donated 12 different brewers and 42 different types of beer. Goodness. And so it's going to be a big tasting. <laughs> um, if anyone's interested in joining us for that, it's from 4 to 8 on Friday night. So it'll be over just before the fireworks start. Um, that might be totally appropriate. I'm not sure. Mm, and then, yeah, well. <laughs> <laughs> but tickets are just $10 in advance, 15 at the door. And that includes the tasting so that it does include the beer tasting. You get a souvenir glass to go with it. And then the barbecue will be there as well. So it, we're, we're hoping for a really fun event down there. Yeah. And this will be a fundraiser for the museum and the Hannibal Arts and Council. And the Hannibal Both. Arts Yeah, we're Council. partnering together for this one. All right. Uh, but probably the biggest thing happening is we are planning over yeah. Labor Day, mm -hmm. uh, the Big River Steampunk festival okay yeah okay we need to back up of course and <laughs> ne next next comes the explanation yes yeah. yeah, steampunk well you know it's kind of an interesting genre of science fiction writing is how it started um basically you know you might have heard of cyberpunk it was in the 80s where these writers were kind of imagining what if all this high technology were applied to you know near future what kind of impact it would have on society well some clever folks that are historians and geeks like me um they decided well what if you took all the modern technology but applied it to the 19th century in victorian times and so if you think about uh, shows like the wild wild west that was on tv in the 60s yes. and then the movie that was there in the 90s uh, all the sherlock holmes movies where it's kind of all this weird gadgetry and all this technology but it's applied to victorian era now the reason that applies to hannibal is because we had these amazing inventions done in hannibal between the Civil War and the turn of the century, you know, we were, had some very prolific inventors, and many, many, many patents were issued to people that lived in Hannibal during that time. And it was everything from a clever salt shaker to uh, the, probably the most famous one was, was uh, Sumner T. McKnight did a, uh, a mechanism to help back railroad locomotives into the river so that they could load the lumber from the river and pull it out by locomotive. And he became very wealthy on that invention. So part of the celebration for steampunk is just the inventions and the creativity and the uh, and the fact that we were a steam town. We had steamboats and we had steam engines on the railroad. And so all of that kind of ties together. So steampunks today it just kind of enjoy imagining what life would be in Victorian era with all this modern technology. That's the best way to say it. It's, it's kind of like Victorian science fiction. And I think the festival, the way to think of it is it's a Renaissance fair, but instead of being medieval, it's Victorian. 
Thank so you. we'll be down on Main Street. And the beauty is we already have the set. You know, Main Street is Victorian, and we have the riverboat, and we're mm -hmm. going to have a hot air balloon tethered at the uh, riverfront so people can ride, you know, several feet, uh, 100 feet up in the air to kind of get a view of the river and the scene. And so we've got a lot of very, very cool things planned. Yeah, and that'll be on Labor Day weekend. Yes, uh, Saturday and Sunday, August 30th and 31st. Um, it's I know it's a little complicated, but uh, if you want to get more information and kind of understand what it is we're going to do, uh, they can go to a new website. We just got it up yesterday, and it's Big River Steampunk Festival dot com. S T E A M P U N K. Yes. Steampunk. Yes. Is what we're talking about. Yes. Okay. Nineteenth century, and 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 and, 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 and as I understand it, the anal the it's a good analogy. You mentioned the Wild Wild West. Yes. You know, people that are old enough to remember that show, and of course. I'm sure it's on in reruns somewhere. Yes. Uh, but people that remember that show, we, we try not to think about the movie. That was just... Yeah, the, the movie wasn't great, no. i got to admit. But <laughs> if you not. go back, the costuming and the gadgetry yeah. and the scenes, that's kind of the feel of steampunk. And it really is... It's a good creative outlet for people who like to dress in costume and, and just uh, be a, kind of a camaraderie of people that are history geeks and, and want to do something fun and interesting, you know? It, yeah. it really is a neat thing and and something that's becoming very very popular and and something that everybody can be a part of it's not expensive you don't have to buy anything expensive you can put together your own costume and um we just it's it's going to be a lot of fun we've got some neat things planned yeah and 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 as you alluded to i mean it it brings back to mind uh and we've talked about this before i mean that you mentioned the period of time between the the end of the civil war and the turn of the century i mean that really was a was a very much a happening time in in the city of Hannibal. Oh, it was, and it's a celebration of that time. You know, the Industrial Revolution, the Gilded Age kind of uh, collided here where there was all this great industry, but because there was, it created this great wealth. And so that's when the mansions were built and Main Street was prolific. We used to have a... Uh, a a dress shop on Main Street that sold Parisian fashions. Mm. You know, I mean, there was great wealth in the town during that time. Now, if you were talking to Molly Brown, who lived here during those years, her family wasn't so wealthy, but no. certainly they would have at least been a part of that celebration. It was a, a great time to be in Hannibal. And so we hope to kind of recreate that era a bit and re-celebrate that. And, and for steampunk people that like to make these costumes and kind of immerse themselves in the 19th century, this is the perfect setting for that. And so uh, I think we're going to be able to draw people from far and wide. There's no steampunk convention anywhere in the Midwest right now. It's mostly East Coast, West Coast. But we've had uh, people call from Chicago and Kansas City and St. Louis and Columbia and, uh, you know, up uh, Detroit area. I mean, there are a lot of people in Midwest that are very, very excited about what we're doing. And I think we're going to have a pretty good sized crowd come in from out of town, which is always helpful on Labor Day weekend. Yes, and and there really hasn't been anything to speak of in in downtown Hannibal during Labor Day week. No, there hasn't. And Ken and I have been kicking this around for a couple of years. And frankly, we just didn't feel like we felt like we had enough on our plate. And this is not necessarily a time that we don't have enough on our plate, but uh, mm -hmm. it was about time that we got something going. And so, you know, the festival may not be uh, extremely large this year. We're certainly not going to have tents all up and down Main Street or anything. But I think it's something that could grow. And I think once people get the hang of it and get the idea of what we're doing, that they'll see it really is just a lot of fun and a really interesting way to celebrate history. All right. So uh, as far as the day-to-day -day goings on at the museum, uh, what's going on these days? Well, we're open at the museum every day from 10 to 7. Uh, the ha Haunted Hannibal Ghost Tours are going very, very well. They're every night at 7 o'clock. Uh, weekends, we usually sell out our 7 o'clock tour Every once in a while, we'll add a tour, maybe at 845, but we hate to promise that because we never know for sure what the crowds are going to be like. Um, but uh, I'll tell you, with Tom Sawyer Days coming and all of the events planned, I think we're going to have a really, really roaring summer down on Main Street. I think people need to come down and see what's happening. There's a lot of wonderful things going on down there. Well, we're off to a roaring start. We are. Oh, with, uh, with everything that's going on to this point. So, again, the best way to find out what's what all is going on uh, in the life of the Hannibal History Museum, what's the best way to do that? You know, if you go to HannibalHistoryMuseum.com, there are links for the Molly Brown Birthplace website, the Steampunk website, Haunted Hannibal Ghost Tour website. That's probably the go-to place to kind of be able to reach all those different uh, entities. And each website gives you all the information you should need. But if you ever have any questions about anything, always feel free to come by and visit Ken and I at the museum or just call us and the number is 573-248-1819 and of course the, the, the 
1819. That's that the is, year Hannibal was founded. Exactly. That's right. <laughs> so that's, that's the method of that. Yeah, Lisa Marks, we always appreciate it. Oh, thank you, Harold.